These are some of the hardest Platinums to ever exist. Games that have only been Platinumed by a handful of people. Meaning that if you can earn these Platinums, you are up there with the very best trophy hunters. First up is an iconic franchise with a recent trilogy release. Because the second one in the series is one of the most challenging Platinums to ever exist. And that game is My Name is Me Wolfenstein 2. Earned by just over 2,000 people, this iconic FPS is one of the hardest Platinum trophies out there. And the reason why is quite simple. Most of the game is actually not too bad. There's a story, collectibles, a couple miscellaneous trophies, but that's the regular easy part. Because the challenge for this Platinum is the Mein Lieben No Death Run. This is one of the longest and most brutal No Death Runs available. Having to do a roughly 4 hour permadeath run through some of the toughest enemies and battles out there whilst being able to get killed in just 1 or 2 shots is a nightmare. And the worst part is, the trophy you get for beating this run is only a bronze. And although there's a couple other hard games with no death runs coming up, these next two games can provide a whole nother level of frustration. Because the Surgeon Sim and I Am Bread games made by Bossa Studios are some of the most infuriating Platinums to have ever been created. These games are just made to be annoying, with glitchy mechanics and terrible controls where you have to be incredibly accurate in order to not drop the bread or unalive the patient, these games require you to have incredible patience. Which is probably why both of these games have only been platinumed by a couple hundred players each. Up next, however, is a game that is down to a lot of mechanical skill instead, as Injustice Gods Among Us is one of the hardest fighting games to platinum. With a difficulty rating of a 9 out of 10, only 577 people have platinumed this game. Because for this Platinum, you need to 3-star a whopping 240 missions in the Star Labs. This is where you have to fulfill each requirement for every star in the main game. Ranging from simply defeating Batman, to using no super meter, or using a special move on multiple enemies, it's an insane grind and one that only the very best fighting game players will unlock. But another game that leaves no room for error is Jump King. Coming in with a 10 out of 10, 100 hours to platinum, it's pretty hard to say the least. This doodle jump lookalike is difficult because it has all sorts of painful trophies to go for. For example, the no fall runs where you can't fall at all, or the speedrun trophies requiring you to beat the game in under 15 minutes, or any of the DLC maps required for the platinum that have increasingly difficult designs. There are so many jumps to make that each mistake will feel horrible and is why only about 150 people have ever platinumed this crazy game. However, the aesthetic or difficultness of Jump King can be a turnoff for some people already. So that's why other insane people have attempted to platinum the Crash Bandicoot games. Crash is one of the most iconic gaming characters, but also home to some of the worst platinum experiences possible. There's four main games in this series, but Crash 4 in particular is the one that puts people off. Again, the common theme here is that the game is challenging, but not too bad. However, the platinum requirement is a huge step up. With some very tough platforming that requires next level accuracy, having to complete levels without dying and breaking every crate, crazy fast time trials, and of course, all the other collectibles make this the most difficult crash game to platinum. However, with over 4,000 platinum earners, it's nowhere near as difficult to platinum as Elder Scrolls Online. Because anyone that attempts this platinum needs to seek help. This is a 9 out of 10, 500 plus hour platinum that requires skill, persistence and crazy determination to achieve. Like there's a literal trophy for being the Emperor, also known as the number one player, which even if you do somehow manage to get that role, you have to maintain it through an entire alliance war which can last for longer than a week. Because other players will also be wanting that exact number one role that you now have. But aside from that, there's also a ton of crafting, other PvP trophies, and of course dungeons to clear in the endgame. This game is the definition of a grind and one that quite literally only the best players can earn the Platinum Trophy for. But as hard as that game is, this next game is one that I deem almost impossible to achieve. With just under 60 people that have mastered Badland to earn the Platinum, it's clear that this is an extremely hard one. The single player part requires you to beat 100 levels and multiple missions already, with tasks to complete to do with collecting clones, not touching anything or beating a level in one try, 
Doing all that on the insane mode for 100 hours is already painful enough, but then you have to do everything again in local co-op, which now not only requires you to play well, but also your partner to not screw you over. But it gets better because last but not least, you will also need to pray to the cloning gods that the game doesn't glitch on you. And this game can be very glitchy and ruin a good run far into a level. It requires military level coordination, luck and a level of patience and perseverance that is otherwise impossible to manage. However, glitches are not the reason why Splasher is a 10 out of 10 difficulty. Because this game is all about pure mechanical skill. Similar to one of the other games coming up next, this is a platformer's dream game. With a cute cartoon art style, this game may look innocent, but with the many insanely difficult trophies required for the plat, it is everything but. There are collectibles to get scattered throughout each level, some straightforward but tedious miscellaneous trophies, but also speed and no death runs. Speed running in particular is a big thing here where you have to complete levels insanely quick, sometimes with collectibles as well, in order to pop a few trophies. But the worst one of all is the full game speedrun trophy, Ninja Runner, which requires you to complete a full no death run of the entire game. This takes around 45 minutes to complete and with the toughest levels being last, this is a game that you need so much practice and patience for and is probably the reason why there's only 111 Platinum Achievers. But no game is as iconically difficult as Super Meat Boy. This cute little blob of meat became an indie icon because of its insane difficulty to beat. The Platinum requirements are very simple but extremely hard to do. First, you have to beat all the Light World levels with an A plus speedrun ranking. Then beat all of the same levels as Dark World variant, which is the same level but even harder. Then find all the collectible bandages throughout all of the worlds, which should then give you the 100%. And only after having done all of that is it time for the no death runs, which requires you to beat all 20 levels in a world without dying. It is notoriously difficult, but since it has become a popular indie icon game, the Platinum has been earned by over 1100 people already. And the funny thing is, is that if you want to get another Super Meat Boy Platinum, you can do the Auto Runner Super Meat Boy Forever game, which is supposedly even more difficult with only 102 Platinum Achievers. But before we talk about the single most difficult Platinum to ever exist, here are a few of the other insanely difficult games to Platinum that are no less difficult than the games mentioned before. Like Tetris for example. Yeah okay, I mean I know this doesn't have a Platinum, but it is quite literally one of the hardest series to get 100% on. Mainly because of the insane SS rank trophies. But also a game like Trials Fusion is stupidly hard to 100%. I mean there's a few other games here that are crazy difficult but more doable like the Trackmania games, Gran Turismo 5, Pathfinder or Hollow Knight. That is if you're not a little beach that uses the glitch. However the one true hardest platinum in the world and possibly ever to exist is of course a game that people don't even attempt because of its difficulty, Crypt of the Necrodancer. This roguelike rhythm game is notorious amongst trophy hunters because it's basically impossible to platinum without a sheer determination to play no other game for the hundreds of hours that you'll be going for this platinum. There's a couple different modes you have to master but the difficulty is mainly due to a few insane trophies. Firstly, you have to beat the game with each playable character. Then, without dying, you have to get 10 wins in a row with one of the characters. After that, you can now move on to beating the entire game with all of the 9 characters without dying. Which after that, allows you to tackle the game with a character named Koda. That will instantly end your run if you make one simple mistake such as taking damage, touching gold or missing a beat. Which is made more difficult by the fact that this game is twice as fast for this trophy. But then the single most difficult trophy possibly in existence is the lowest of low trophy which requires the player to beat the entire game with all 9 characters in a row without dying, again, but with the insane extra requirements of no heals, no upgrades, no spells, and only your starting gear. This is the definition of torture and will literally require hundreds of hours of practice. And it means that only 28 people have ever platinum this game and it makes Super Meat Boy look like a piece of cake. 
I honestly do not know why the devs decided to make this the hardest platinum in existence or why anyone would think this would be a fun platinum to go for. But if you do have any of these other platinums on the list, drop a comment under the like button below. And if you want to see what the most popular platinums on PlayStation are, then check out this video. And that's it. See ya.